Welcome back everyone. So today we're going to go back to the Voice of the Martyrs and uh, we're going to read probably two, maybe three segments from it today. And uh, we're going to start out in England with someone named John Lambert. And the verse that they're using for this particular one is, Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua twenty four fifteen, Will you choose to live or die? What do you say? The questioner was Henry the Eighth, the King of England, who had unrestrained power in the land. The criminal who stood before him, charged with heresy, was John Lambert, a Greek and Latin tutor. Lambert audaciously challenged his pastor for delivering a sermon that didn't agree with Scripture. Lambert was brought before the Archbishop of Canterbury and later before King Henry. Quoting from the scriptures and explaining the original Greek, Lambert presented his case to an assembly of bishops, lawyers, justices, and peers. The two sides argued strenuously back and forth until Henry, bored with it, presented Lambert with a final choice. After all the reasons and instructions of these knowledgeable men, are you now satisfied? Will you choose to live or die? What do you say? Lambert took a deep breath and answered confidently, I commend my soul to the hands of God, but my body I give you, I give to your clemency. You must die, Henry answered scornfully, for I will not be a patron to heretics. Convicted of heresy, Lambert was burned at the stake. Lambert was unbowed. <clears throat> in his slow, torturous death, he lifted his hands in worship, declaring, None but Christ, none but Christ. In the modern age of possibilities, <clears throat> excuse me, our right to choose has grown nearly insatiable. 200 television channels are a basic right, tantamount to freedom itself. We want options, variety, assortment, even mundane decisions, are delivered daily to our doorstep. What to wear, to eat, drive, or do. However, our choices are no longer utilitarian. They are virtually limitless. In contrast, when life's greater questions come to us, we have only one answer to give, none but Christ. Is there an, another way to heaven? None but Christ. He is the way. Is there another priority in life does that uh, that deserves one's to full devotion none but christ he is supreme can someone else satisfy the longing of the human heart none but christ can satisfy truth has no one alternative you see when life's greater questions come they will are you prepared to testify that all of possibilities None but Christ will satisfy. The next place we're heading to is to Romania with Brother Vasil. The verse they give for this one is, Forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. Matthew 6.12 In communist Romania, churches were closed and pastors arrested as part of a seven-year drive to eliminate the nations of all superstition. So when Brother Vestile and his wife began holding more church meetings in their little home, they knew it would not escape the attention of the government forever. Every evening Vestile prayed, God, if you know of some prisoner who needs my help, send me back to jail. His wife shuddered while she mumbled a reluctant amen. When they learned that one of the church members' homes had been raided, copies of Vestile's sermons had been confiscated, they also learned that the assistant pastor, their friend and co-worker, became an informant and had denounced Vasile. It was 1 a.m. when the police raided the little apartment and placed Vasile under arrest. As they handcuffed him, Vasile said, I won't leave here peacefully unless you allow me a few minutes to embrace my wife. The police reluctantly agreed. They would have their way soon enough. The couple held each other, prayed and sang with such emotion that even the captain was moved. Finally, they escorted him out to a police van, with Vasile's wife tearfully running after them. Vasile turned and called out his lost words before disappearing for many years. 
Give all my love to our son and the pastor who denounced me. Extreme betrayal requires extreme forgiveness. If our enemies come against us with such ferocity, should we not be just as generous with our act of forgiveness? When our enemy stoops low enough to denounce us, ought we not reach higher to find the willingness to forgive them? Jesus taught us that forgiving evil is our own good, is for our own good. Deep betrayal can cause us to close our hearts to our own experience of forgiveness. If you find yourself being stingy in the forgiveness department, you will experience a meager sense of release from your own sins. Being betrayed is bad enough. Becoming bitter is a defeat you cannot afford. To whom do you need to offer extravagant forgiveness today? So I think those are both very important messages. Um, Learning forgiveness especially, um, but also knowing what's right. So the only way to know what's right is to study our Bible every day and to make sure that we are well versed in in our scripture and then being willing to use that scripture to stand up to people who are misrepresenting our faith or people who are um, not following God. We need to stand up and we need to be a light for him in everything that we do. So I thank you all for listening. It's a bit of a shorter one today, but uh, I hope you'll catch me in the next one when we delve back into Revelations and the end of Revelations.